all right so we proved this zalkman's lemma in the in the last lecture and uh, you know basically it's a theorem and it is a characterization of normal families uh, and i also remarked uh, that um, you know at the end of the lecture i remarked that the converse of zalkman's lemma is also true therefore zalkman's lemma is a characterization of uh, you know um, uh, non normal families okay uh, and uh, it is like uh, uh, and you know it's like marty's theorem marty's theorem is a characterization of normal families of meromorphic functions and zalkman's lemma is a characterization of non normal families okay and uh, both of them are very important in the uh, when you go to the proof of the picard theorem which is our main aim okay so i just want to begin with the following remark uh, uh, so uh, so recall that uh, you know wh when i was giving you the motivation for uh, zalkman's lemma i i we 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 actually proved this uh, result uh, so if you take a family uh, script f uh, of uh, meromorphic functions defined on a domain uh, in the complex plane uh, or even in the extended plane and uh, you take a point uh, z not in the domain where the family is normal okay then uh, you give uh, then it, then this normality at a point which is supposed to be normality in some neighborhood of the point so uh, normal uh, nor normality at a point is uh, defined just like analyticity at a point is defined okay so normality at a point means normality in some open disk surrounding that point okay and if you have a family which is normal at a, at a point then it has this property that you know given any sequence uh, of points tending to that point is it tends tending to z not and a sequence of decreasing positive radii a sequence of radii tending to zero okay then uh, give me any sequence in the family i can find a subsequence such that the zoomed functions converge uh, normally to a constant function on the plane okay this is the uh, this is what we proved uh, and uh, uh, this was very easy to deduce okay and uh, and zalkman's lemma actually tells you that if the family is not normal you will get the exact opposite namely you will be able to find a sequence such that the zoomed functions converge to a non constant uh, meromorphic function okay that is the big difference okay and uh, what i want to tell you is that the op the converse of this proposition is also true if you apply if you it's a it's a simple it's an it's an exercise uh, uh, which you might for example uh, 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 do uh, you'll have to use a diagonalization argument okay uh, and uh, mm, you can you, you can do this uh, simple exercise and uh, 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 well not not so simple but not so hard also uh, but you have to, you can use zalkman's lemma and show that the converse of this proposition is true okay so i'll i'll write that down first so uh, so here is a theorem so so here is again a proposition uh, this is uh, converse of the proposition stated uh before uh, zalkman's lemma and uh, what is this uh, proposition um, well it uh, it's a criterion for normality uh, uh, so uh, uh, suppose uh, script f is a family of meromorphic functions on a neighborhood of a point z0 okay uh, the point z0 could be a point in the extended plane really it could even be the point at infinity it doesn't matter okay suppose that that for every sequence uh, is it tending to z0 and every sequence epsilon n tending to 0 plus epsilon n are all positive numbers okay uh, so uh, given uh, any sequence uh, fn in 
the family script f there exists a subsequence uh, f and k such that the the zoomed sequence uh, So, what is the zoom sequence? It is g is g and k of zeta is the zooming of uh, f and k uh, at uh, z k uh, with the zooming factor 1 by epsilon k and using the variable zeta and this is just f and k uh, is z of z k plus epsilon k times zeta. Okay. So, this zoom sequence uh, converges uh, normally on the complex plane to a constant uh, value in so this constant value can also be uh, the point uh, the value infinity so it is a constant value in the extended plane ok. So, suppose this this property uh, is satisfied by the family script f ok that whenever you give me a sequence of points uh, converging to z naught and a sequence of radii uh, going to 0 from any sequence uh, f n I can extract a subsequence for which the zoom sequence converges normally to a constant ok. Then uh, script f has to be normal at z naught ok. Then script f has to be normal at z that means it has to be normal in some open neighborhood of z ok. And uh, I, I will not write down the details, but I leave it as an exercise to you uh, proof is uh, use uh, Zalkman's lemma, lemma and a diagonalization argument argument assuming uh, the uh, assuming the family script f is not normal uh, not normal uh, 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 on a decreasing uh, sequence of uh, neighborhoods of z naught. So, uh, uh, I will just uh, uh, this is this is actually more of an this is an exercise ok. This is an exercise uh, that I want you to do. So, uh, the proof is by contradiction ok. So, you assume I have to show that this family is normal at z naught which means I have to show that the family is normal in some open neighborhood of z naught. So, if that is not true it means that in every open neighborhood of z naught the family is not normal. So, you take a decreasing sequence of open neighborhoods of z naught ok, the neighborhoods becoming smaller and smaller. For example, you can take decreasing a decreasing sequence of open disk centered at z naught with radii 1 by n uh, where n goes to infinity ok. And on each of these disks you can apply Zalkman's lemma because uh, Zalkman's lemma applies to a non normal family ok. And then uh, you will get sequences uh, in from the Zalkman's lemma. And, and then you apply a, uh, the right diagonal you apply a diagonalization argument and then apply the hypothesis of the proposition and you will get a contradiction ok. So, I leave it to you to uh, do that right. So, um, well uh, so now, now let me continue with uh, the, 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 main, uh, the main result. So the main result is well you know uh, what we are going to which is going to be the main uh, one should say this is really the the, the deep theorem that is uh, uh, that is the theorem of Montel ok uh, and it is a theorem on normality ok and uh, it is a it is a deep theorem because it involves lots of things it involves uh, several theorems in complex analysis and it is the key to proving the Picard theorems ok. So, uh, the point is that uh, uh, so this is a Montel theorem and what is a Montel theorem? The Montel theorem is a it is a 
it's a, it's actually a, uh, it's a normality. It's a theorem for normality of a family. And what it says is that you take a family of meromorphic functions on a domain. Okay, if you know that the functions in the family always omit three values in the extended plane, three distinct values in the extended plane, then the family is normal. Okay, so uh, it's a, it's a beautiful theorem to check that a family is normal. All you make sure is that uh, you find three values in the extended plane, which means you have to find two complex finite comp values in the complex plane, the finite complex plane, and one uh, probably the value infinity. Okay, so you should somehow find three values that all the functions in the family miss. Okay, and they should omit these values. And if you do that, then you can uh, then the theorem says that the family is normal. Okay, so somehow omission of values is connected to normality. Okay, the normality of the family is connected to omission of certain number of values uh, of uh, by functions in the family okay and uh, and all uh, and the theorem says that if you can make sure that the family omits three values then you are sure it's normal okay and mind you normality is a, a condition for compactness okay so you can imagine the theorem is very powerful you are you are saying that a certain family of uh, 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 meromorphic functions on a domain you are saying that it is uh, compact in the sense that you know it is normally sequentially compact that is every sequence admits a normally convergent subsequence okay to uh, that is a very strong uh, property okay and to uh, and to deduce that all you need to say you have to just verify that the family omits three values okay three three values and it is it is really beautiful. So, uh, so in particular what it means is that you know if you take a family of analytic functions on a domain okay if you take a family of analytic functions on a domain okay and if it and, and if you know that it omits uh, two finite complex values okay uh, then uh, you can immediately say that it is normal okay because when you are looking at analytic functions you can forget the third value which is infinity okay infinity is already omitted okay so uh, this uh, this version uh, of the theorem uh, model theorem is called the fundamental normality test okay so if you want to check a family of analytic functions is normal okay on a domain all you have to do is uh, uh, you make sure that uh, it omits make sure that every uh, member of the family omits two fixed uh, complex values okay and and you, then then you are sure that it is normal okay so it's a very deep theorem so let me state it so this is uh, montel's theorem theorem on normality uh, so here is the theorem uh, let script f be a family of uh, uh, meromorphic functions functions on a domain d in the extended complex plane uh, such that uh, script f uh, omits three distinct three distinct values in C union infinity. So, so what does this mean that is there are uh, uh, elements lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 in C union infinity. And, and 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 of course they are all distinct lambda i not equal to lambda j for i not equal to j okay such that uh, uh, well such that each uh, 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 such that for each uh, f uh, in the family uh, f does not take uh, the values any of the values lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 okay these are these are omitted values then uh, script f is normal 
So this is the this is the uh, this is the this is the I mean the the deepest I would say this is the deepest theorem in this course. Okay, this is the most most important theorem in this course. All right. To check that a family of meromorphic functions on a domain is normal, you just ensure that it omits three values. All the functions in the family omit three three fixed values. Okay, three distinct fixed values. All right. So uh, so here is uh, so how do we go about the proof? Uh, so uh, so the, so the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, you know um, uh, you know that uh, you know fundamental property of Mobius transformations that uh, you know given any three values uh, any three uh, values in the extended plane you can find a Mobius transformation that can map those three values to zero, one, and infinity. Okay, so you can always I mean this is the way uh, in which you write down a Mobius transformation in terms of cross ratios because you know a Mobius transformation has a fundamental property that, that it preserves cross ratios. So this is something that you should have seen in a first course in complex analysis. So you know these three values lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3 in the extended plane you know I can apply a Mobius transformation and make those uh, map those values to 0, 1 and infinity okay and then I can compose the whole uh, family by this uh, uh, I can transform the family using this Mobius transformation. This I, I, I transform the whole family by using this Mobius transformation, and uh, therefore, without loss of generality, by using a Mobius transformation, I can assume that the values that are omitted, the three distinct values that are omitted, are zero, one, and infinity. Okay, so this is the first reduction, right? So let me write this down uh, using a Mobius transformation. Uh, uh, we may assume without loss of generality that uh, lambda 1 is 0, lambda 2 is 1, lambda 3 is equal to infinity. Okay, you can do this, right? So, uh, uh, so you can assume, uh, and of course, by Mobius transformation, I mean a bilinear transformation or linear fractional transformation. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing. Then the second thing is that you know uh, uh, the the domain on which uh, the domain D in the extended plane, where this uh, family is defined. Okay that domain also can be uh, uh, you can change that domain uh, and scale it so that uh, you know uh, it is it contains the unit disk okay okay so uh, the, the point is that uh, uh, see i'm 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 trying what am i trying to check i'm trying to check that this family is normal my my final aim is to check the family is normal but how do I check it is normal? I check it is normal by checking it is normal at every point because normal normality at a point means normality in a open small open disks containing that point and, of, and the property of being no, normal is a local property. So if you check it at every point that is if you check it in an open abode of every point that is enough to check it is normal on the whole domain. Okay? So it is like checking analyticity you, you do not have to check. Uh, if you want to check a function is analytic on a whole domain, it is enough to check uh, at every point of the domain it is analytic. So what I will have to do is I will have to, I, I, I can assume that I am checking normality of the family on a small disk, on, on, on a domain which is, a, which is like a disk. Okay? And of course, uh, 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 you know uh, if I am checking at the point at infinity, all right, uh, then uh, I will have to uh, take a neighborhood of infinity which is the exterior of a, a disk uh, in the complex plane and I will have to change the variable from z to 1 by z to make it into a disk surrounding the origin. So in any case I can, uh, I can always assume that I am checking normality on a disk in the complex plane and I can translate that disk to the origin and scale it so that it contains the, uh, the disk, uh, uh, contains the unit disk. Okay. So, I am, so again this is another reduction I am making 
without loss of generality I will it is enough for me to check that the family is defined as a, on the unit disk ok. So, so this is another reduction ok uh, without loss of generality we may assume that uh, D contains contains uh, 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 the unit disk mod z less than 1 ok. Because, because uh, uh, basically because you have to check normality locally and that means you have to check normality on a on a disk surrounding every point and that disk I can assume it to be the unit disk ok. Because I can always translate any small disk uh, to the origin ok. This, so, that the center of the small disk goes to the origin and then I can scale it so that it is big enough so that it contains the unit disk ok. And translations and scalings are also Mobius transformations. So, they are not going to modify the, the properties of the family ok. So, uh, I can so so my situation is like this. I now have a family of meromorphic functions. Okay, I now have a family of meromorphic functions defined on the unit disk. And what is given to me is that they omit the values zero, one, and infinity. I have to check that the family is normal. Okay, but look at the beauty of it. Since uh, the these functions omit the value infinity, they are analytic. Okay, because you know a meromorphic function takes the value infinity only at a pole, and the the moment you assume that it does not take the value infinity all the functions have become analytic all right. And the other thing is that all the functions are non vanishing also because uh, the value 0 is omitted ok. So, you are having non vanishing analytic functions on the unit disk ok and they all omit the uh, and, and the what is the what is the nice thing the nice thing now is that you know if you have a non vanishing analytic function on a simply connected domain you can always find kth roots which are analytic ok. Because the reason is if you have a non vanishing analytic function on a simply connected domain you can find a logarithm for the function. And once you find a logarithm multiplying that analytic logarithm by 1 by k and then taking exponential ok. So, e power 1 by k log will give you a kth root of the function which is analytic. So, the advantage now is that your family has kth roots every function in your family has kth roots for all k ok. And the trick is what uh, the, the point is that since it since the uh, uh, see if 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 a function does not take the value 1 ok then uh, its kth root cannot take uh, 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 the value which is equal to a kth root of unity. If the, if the original function does not take a value 1 then its kth root cannot the, the, the analytic kth root cannot take a kth root of unity as a value ok. And what case we will be using? Uh, we will be using 2 power case ok. So, uh, so I am going to write that down. Uh, uh, note that uh, script f is uh, analytic and non vanishing on uh, on mod z less than 1 which is simply connected so the uh, so you know so 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 the families so i'll put this as f sub k this is uh, f to the 1 by 2 to the k uh, where f is in script f are defined and analytic on uh, the unit disk uh, with uh, 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 omission of the values 0 infinity and uh, 1 by 1 by 2 to the k 
which are two power kth roots of uh, unity. Uh, okay. So, so the, uh, so I am I am so you see this uh, mind you uh, the the whole point is f to the one by two power k is defined as e to the uh, one by two to the k log f. And this log f, an analytic branch of log f exists because the domain is simply the unit disk is simply connected and f never vanishes on the domain. Okay, so uh, this is something that uh, is very very important. Okay, so fine, uh, uh, and and you know see now you you, you but where I, now you know I want you to understand what the idea is. See the idea is you know uh, these uh, so you look at these functions. Okay. Uh, these functions uh, uh, are, de are defined on the unit disk, okay. But then, you know, what I'm I'm trying to prove that they are all normal. I'm I'm trying to prove that uh, this family scriptive is normal on the unit disk, okay. And uh, mind you, that means that I can extract the normality is uh, just that I can extract from any sequence a normally convergent subsequence, okay. But you see. If I can extract uh, uh, such a uh, if, uh, from a sequ sequence a normally convergent subsequence, I can do that also for the uh, two power kth roots. Okay, so uh, it's it's uh, it's obvious that you know uh, the family script f is normal if and only if uh, any of the families script f sub k is normal for any k uh, greater than one. Okay, so actually. It amounts to uh, to show to showing that f is normal. It's enough to show that one of these script f k is normal. Okay, and uh, therefore, if you contradict the normality of script f, what happens is you are contradicting in one stroke the normalities of each of the script f sub case. Okay, and once you contradict the normality of each of the script f sub case. Zalkman's lemma comes into the picture and gives you a zoomed limit function, which is a non-constant uh, meromorphic function on C with spherical derivative uh, equal to one at the origin, and the spherical derivative is always bounded by one. Okay, and the beautiful thing is that function that you get is an entire function. Okay, because it's a limit of functions from each of these families. It will not take the value uh, infinity, so it will be analytic, and it will be divide, defined on the whole complex plane, so it will be entire. Okay, and then you will see that uh, 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 you can get a contradiction easily by ap applying Liouville's theorem. Okay, so uh, so so let me write this down. Uh, note that uh, uh, f is normal, uh, normal. Uh, if and only if, if and only if f k is normal uh, for every k or for some k. Okay. So, uh, so we are going to proceed by contradiction. What we'll do is assume uh, f script f is not normal. Okay. Because I want, we would like to use uh, Zalkman's lemma, which is a characterization of non-normality. All right. So, so assume f is not normal. Thus, f sub k is not normal for every k. All right, and. Uh, uh, Zalkman's lemma, lemma gives for each script f k a zoomed limit function I uh, will call the zoomed limit function as g sub k of zeta okay, on, on, on the whole complex plane. Uh, uh, 
which is uh, which is meromorphic non constant uh, its spherical derivative at the origin is 1 and all its spherical derivatives are bounded by 1 okay this is what zalkman's lemma tells you see zalkman's lemma tells you that whenever a family is not normal i can get a zoomed limit function which is non constant meromorphic and the non constancy is kind of normalized or fixed by making the spherical derivative to be 1 at the origin and mind you the limit function is defined as a function on the whole plane okay the zoomed limit function is on the whole plane so i have this okay now what i want you to notice is that the, the first thing i want to tell you is that uh, uh, the zoomed limit function uh, what is what is each zoomed limit function it's a normal limit of uh, meromorphic functions okay but uh, it's a normal limit of functions from uh, fk script f sub k but mind you script f sub k are all analytic okay see because uh, we cleverly uh, uh, assumed one of the omitted values is infinity and therefore we are only working with analytic functions okay therefore this limit function these limit functions gk's they also have to omit the value infinity the only other possibility is that they can be identically infinity because you know whenever you have a normal limit of analytic functions okay then either the normal limit is again an uh, the limit function is again analytic or it is identically infinity this is the only thing that is possible so the only thing that could have happened is that these limit functions are all identically infinite some of the limit functions uh, zoomed limit functions gk's they could have been identically infinity but if it if the, if but even that cannot happen because if they were identically infinity the spherical derivative would have been zero but i have put the condition that the the the, the zalkman lemma tells you that the spherical derivative at the origin is one they are non constant so what it means is that all these gk's are all entire they are all entire functions you have, you have cooked up a family of entire functions you have cooked up a sequence of entire functions okay so uh, so let me write that down uh, note that that uh, since uh, gk hash of 0 is 1 and gk is a normal limit of analytic functions from the family fk uh, gk is entire it's entire uh, because it is analytic and it is uh, 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 defined on the whole plane so it's entire and and the point is that it doesn't take the value infinity cannot take the value infinity see in principle it could have been a meromorphic function it could have taken the value infinity at a pole but it can never take the value uh, uh, the, the only way uh, uh, the, the only possibility is that because it is a normal limit not of just meromorphic functions but it is a normal limit of analytic functions okay the limit can only either be completely analytic or it can be completely identically infinity you cannot get from a limit of uh, normal limit of analytic functions you cannot cook up a meromorphic function this will not happen that's ba basically because of kurvitz theorem because if you cook up a meromorphic function it means that your your pole is popping up in the limit but if a pole pops up then for the reciprocal function a zero pops up hurwitz theorem says that a zero of the limit will come from the zero of the original functions beyond a certain stage that means the original functions the reciprocals of the original functions if the if if the if the if the limit takes uh, if the if the if the if the limit takes a value uh, uh, zero uh, if or if the limit takes a value infinity okay then the reciprocal of the limit will take the value zero and the reciprocals of the original functions beyond a certain stage should have zeros which means that beyond a certain stage the original functions uh, should be meromorphic but they are all analytic okay so basically it's kurvitz theorem which is working behind behind all this so therefore each of these functions is entire and the beautiful thing is what are the values that they miss uh, see these this gk will miss the value zero infinity of course and all the 2k roots of unity 
because every function in uh, fk script fk is suppose by construction it misses all the 2k roots of unity okay so let me write that down uh, note that uh, gk misses the value 0 and uh, infinity 0 and uh, the uh, 2 kth roots of unity ok and uh, actually what I am using here is actually hood use use hood width system here. So again let, let me repeat that what does Hurwitz theorem says? Say you take a sequence of analytic functions okay suppose it converges normally to a limit function okay a normal limit of analytic functions is always analytic okay or it can be identically infinity but this being identically infinity is anyway out of the picture because all the spherical derivatives are all non-zero okay. So the limit is always uh, an analytic function okay. So if you have a uh, sequence of uh, analytic functions that converge normally to an analytic function then the limit function if it has a 0 then the 0 must come by a, a, a limit of zeros of the original functions that are converging beyond a certain stage that is Kurwitz's theorem ok. In other words what are you saying you are, you are, what is it saying it is saying that you know if the limit function takes the value 0 then the original function should also take the value 0 beyond a certain stage in a neighborhood of the 0 of the limit function ok and this is not only true for the value 0 it is true for any value because the uh, f for f to take for f of z to take the value lambda it is the same as looking at a 0 of f of z minus lambda which is also analytic ok. So actually what you can say is the Hurwitz theorem can also be thought of as suppose you have a sequence of analytic functions suppose it is converging normally to a non constant analytic function ok. Then if the limit function takes any complex value then all the original functions also should take that complex value beyond a certain stage that is what it says and in fact uh, Hurwitz theorem says more in fact it says that even the multiplicities should coincide. The multiplicity if, if the limit function takes a value with a certain multiplicity then all the functions in the original sequence that converge to that limit function they also should take the same value with the same multiplicity beyond a certain stage ok in a neighborhood of the point where that value is assumed ok. So this is just Hurwitz's theorem ok. So mind you the spherical derivative is a, a non-negative real valued function ok. Uh, the, the, the limit function gk these are all uh, uh, these are the ones that are entire and they miss the values infinity 0 and the 2k roots of unity. And of course, I uh, will have to make use of these two conditions here that the uh, that they all have spherical derivative 1 at 0 and they all have spherical derivative bounded by 1. So, uh, uh, note that uh, all these gk's having spherical derivative bounded by 1, what does it tell you? You can apply Marty's theorem now. You look at the sequence of gk's this is a sequence of an entire functions on the plane ok gk is a sequence of entire functions on the plane they are spherical derivatives are all bounded therefore by Marty's theorem they there is a subsequence which will converge normally on the plane ok. So uh, I now I am applying Marty's theorem ok by Marty's theorem Uh, this gk has a convergent subsequence normally convergent subsequence uh, g and k uh, uh, on of course it is normally convergent on the whole, whole on the whole plane ok because gk is of course a it is a family of uh, entire functions ok. Let us take a so take such a normally convergent subsequence and take a limit 
take the limit function okay you will get a you will get a function g all right now that function g see that function g uh, is now a normal limit of entire functions okay and therefore the only possibility is that it is also entire okay or it is identically infinity but it cannot be identically infinity because of the spherical derivative uh, being 1 at 0. So, the limit function is also uh, going to be an entire function okay uh, and you will see that is the function for which I am going to apply Liouville's theorem and, and get constancy which is a contradiction okay. So, uh, let uh, so let g be limit as k tends to infinity of g and k okay then g is entire then then of course you know g hash is also bounded by 1 and g hash at uh, uh, the at the origin is 1 uh, so g is entire non constant and non constant okay so you have cooked up an entire non constant function okay and see now comes the uh, now comes something very nice see each of the uh, uh, g and k's uh, the values that they omit are 0 infinity and the 2 kth uh, 2 to the uh, 2 to the n kth roots of unity okay. But you know as k becomes large these 2 to the n kth roots of unity they if you take the union of all these that is a dense subset of the unit circle okay. So, what it means is that this g this function g it omits a dense subset of values of the unit circle therefore it has to omit all values on the unit circle this is because of the open mapping theorem. What does the open mapping theorem say whenever a function takes a value it has to take all values in a small disk surrounding that the image of every open set is an open set for a for a non constant analytic function the image of an open set is always an open set okay. So, g being an entire non constant entire function if g omits values on a dense subset of the unit circle by the open mapping theorem g has to omit all the values on the unit circle okay. But the unit circle disconnects the plane into two pieces one is the interior and the other is the exterior and therefore the image of the complex plane under g which has to be connected has to either go completely inside the unit disc or it has to go completely outside the unit disc. If it goes inside the unit disc then you have found a g is a bounded entire function so it is a constant that is a contradiction. If it goes completely outside the unit disc you take 1 by g which is also going to be entire because mind you g also omits the value 0 so 1 by g is also entire. So 1 by g will become a bounded entire function it will become constant therefore g will become a constant. So in any case you get g is a constant you get a contradiction okay and that proves the theorem that is all okay. So what you must appreciate is you have used open mapping theorem you have used Hurwitz's theorem you have used uh, Zalkman's uh, lemma you have used uh, uh, the Marty's theorem okay everything has been used okay. So let me write this down uh, since uh, g k uh, so g to the n k omits the uh, omits the values 0 infinity and 1 by 1 by 2 to the n k uh, g omits the values 0 infinity and mod z is equal to 1 uh, because of the open mapping theorem which says g is open and the fact that 1 by uh, the, the 2 power n kth roots of unity uh, uh, k equal to 1, 2 and so on uh, is a dense subset of mod z is equal to 1. Thus, g of c 
which is connected and belongs to complex plane minus mod z is equal to 1 has to uh, imply either mod g is less than 1 or mod g is greater than 1. If mod g is less than 1, Liouville's theorem implies g is equal to constant contradiction. It is not constant because spherical derivative at the origin is uh, 1, okay. And if g is, uh, if mod g is greater than 1, then 1 by g is entire and mod 1 by g is less than 1. So, again Liouville's theorem implies 1 by g is constant which implies g is constant again contradiction ok. So, that is it. So, the family has to be normal. So, that finishes the proof of uh, uh, this theorem. And as a corollary, you can see that if you have a family of analytic functions on a domain, if, uh, 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 if you know that the family omits two complex values, two finite uh, complex values, then it has to be normal. That is a corollary of this, okay. This, this theorem that we have proved is for meromorphic functions and you are including the value uh, infinity also. So, uh, sometimes that uh, uh, that is called as if uh, this this uh, this condition of omitting three values being omitted for a family of meromorphic functions or two values being omitted for a family of analytic functions is called the fundamental normality criterion. So, it is a condition very simple condition to check whether a given family is normal ok. I will stop here.